Hi, and welcome to the Simulation Step Up series. My name is Ramesh Lakshmipati. I'm a Senior Technical Sales Specialist with Dassault Systems Sarvix Corporation. Now, in this presentation, we will review part one of modeling bowl connectors in SOLIDWORK simulation. Let's get started. So why connectors? Well, connectors connect two or more parts of the assemblies together. Not only that, they transfer loads between the connected parts. They can resist and take on preloads as well as external loads. In SOLIDWORK simulation, there's a wide variety of connectors to use from, like the spring, pin, bolt, bearing connectors, spot wells, edge well connectors, links, and rigid connections. Now, all of these connectors are actually virtual, meaning there is no physical geometry required for simulation. Hence, there is no stress calculation done on these connectors. However, there are results reported to help with the sizing requirements of these connectors, like the axial shear forces, bending moments, and torque, and so on. Now, bolted joints are, are, they are an important aspect of many assembly modeling problems. And in most cases for simple problems, they can be calculated using a free body diagram or, or simple hand calculations as illustrated in this particular slide. However, as the geometries and fastener schemes become more complex, especially when complex loading gets involved, calculating fastener loads like the bending shear and axial loads become significantly more difficult. This is where using a finite element technique in SOLIDWORKS simulation to calculate the bolt loads becomes very important in the design process. Now, the tensile behavior in a bolted joint depends on the amount of preload and the external force applied. Not only that, but the relative stiffness of the material of the bolt and the connected parts are also crucial in determining what load the bolt will eventually carry compared to the connecting parts. So for example, let's consider perfectly rigid parts tightened together by a bolt as shown in this particular picture. Now suppose the bolt has been given a preload, then applying an external tensile force on the bolt would ha will have actually no effect on the axial force in the bolt unless the external force becomes greater than the bolt preload force. The contact force as shown, however, starts to reduce and once the external load exceeds the bolt preload, then the bolt starts to take on some of the external load. And of course, in reality, things get more complex than the simple case illustrated here. Bolt and joints fail due to a number of different reasons. One of the more dominating causes is that, is that there is simply not enough clamping force to satisfy the problem either because the parts separate, caskets leak, or there is just general looseness in the system. Another failure aspect of the bolted joint is that the bolt actually gets overloaded by the external loads either to the point where it's yielded or takes on a permanent set, thus weakening the joint. It also can actually get loaded so immensely that the fastener actually fails because it's taken beyond its tensile strength. Shear failure is also critical in bolted joints. In terms of fatigue failure, it's a very common problem in bolted joints and can typically be dealt with by making sure there's enough preload in the design of the bolt. Now, excessive bearing pressure is another aspect of bolt failure, though it doesn't typically result in the failure of the fastener itself, but it's failure of the bolted joint in that the bolt is torqued or preloaded too heavily and thus damages the underlying parts. And the last common bolt failure aspect that comes up most often is st thread stripping, which is essentially the inability of the thread choice made by the designer to withstand the axial load of either the preload or pull out from the external loading. 
Now, each one of these failure aspects can be resolved with good upfront knowledge of the bolt axial shear or bending loads, and thus allowing the user to better size the bolt and avoid these types of failures. So a little bit about bolt, con uh, bolt connectors. Bolt connectors inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation provides the primary outputs required to size uh, the bolts in a system. So first of all, there is a visual feedback as shown here, which is based on a factor of safety calculation. And it's the quickest and the easiest way to see what bolts are going to work and what bolts are actually going to fail. Now the shear axial and forces and the bending moment are actually provided also as an output for each fastener, thus allowing you to determine whether you get sufficient preload or axial tension to survive the external loads. It's important to remember in the design of a bolted chine that most systems are redundant in that the load path isn't so straightforward. Thus, the stiffness of the geometry as well as the stiffness of the bolts will actually determine how much load the bolt is going to carry. In the simplistic statement, stiffer bolts are going to carry more load, and so the stiffer the bolt, the more load goes through them. The weaker the bolt, the less load goes through them. So remember that if you resize your bolts because it's a redundant system, if you resize using a stiffer or a weaker bolt, the loads will change and you should read on the simulation to make sure that you have the correct forces going through the current bolt sizing. And finally, also remember that the output from the bolt connector is not an end all. The output is not going to tell you if the bolt is good enough. You still need to use standard calculations and tables to determine if your thread proof strength and other aspects of the fastener safety are actually satisfied. We'll go through a couple of these calculations during this presentation. The bolt connector in SOLIDWORKS simulation is really an effort to mimic a real life bolt. And so it works on the same principles when it comes to geometry and bolt types. A typical geometry of the bolt involves the bolt and nut, the shank, the connecting parts, and the thread faces if applicable. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, there's a variety of bolt types supported, such as standard counter bore with nut, countersink with nut, standard counter bore screw, countersink screw, and the foundation bolt. So let's take a look at how a bolt connector is set up in SOLIDWORKS simulation. The first step is really to select the type of bolt. Let's start with the standard bolt with the nut option as shown. Now a bolt with nut essentially assumes that there is an area of planar load transfer on the top face of the part one and the bottom face of the connected part, let's call that part two. So that the axial load can be taken out through the bolt head and nuts versus the threads. Now the circular edge selections for the bolt head and nut holes are going to be the, the geometry selections. Now these can be on the same part or can be diff from different parts. However, they need to be concentric. The next input is the bolt head and nut diameters and the shank diameters. The program smartly comes up with these values based on the circular edge selections in the previous step but as a user, you can still always input your own values. One thing about using bolted connections is there is no need to split the surfaces of the parts where the bolt head and nut contact faces will be, since this is internally done during the meshing time based on the diameter of the bolt head and nut. So the above steps discussed are really the fundamentals for any bolted connection that you'll use in SOLIDWORKS simulation. We'll discuss the other settings later on in this presentation. Next is the countersink with nut bolt connector. Now here, unlike the previous case, instead of the circular edge for the bolt head, you select the conical face 
and behind the scenes the program automatically constrains all the nodes on the conical face with the beam element that represents the bolt shank length now more of this again will be discussed later on during this presentation now notice that the rest of the selections are exactly the same as the standard bolt and nut option and so again uh, keep in mind that uh, when using bolted connections you really don't have to use any split lines which because of the fact that this is internally taken care of during the meshing process the next bolted connection is called the standard counter pour screw without a nut now for the bolt head again the circular edge is selected the thread faces would be the shank contact faces from one or more parts one thing to note here is that these faces should be coaxial and can be actually from multiple parts and the rest of the selections are exactly the same as what we have discussed with respect to the previous bolt definitions all right so when it comes to the countersink screw option again uh, the, the basic selection here is the conical face for representing the bolt head and there is no need to specify any head diameter the thread faces would be the shank contact faces from from one or more parts so one again one thing to note here is that these faces should be coaxial and can be from multiple parts and lastly the shank diameter should be specified to complete the definition of the countersink screw connection. The last bolt that we're going to talk about is the foundation bolt. The foundation bolt allows the bolt contact or the bolt connector between to be defined between a part and the ground. The foundation bolt can be treated both at the part level and the assembly level. The bolt head location is again defined using a circular edge and for the target plane a reference plane geometry can be selected to mimic the crown or the wall to which the bolt is attached. You cannot select a face however or a surface for the virtual wall. It has to be a reference plane that you can easily create in SolidWorks on the fly. Ideally, this would be coincident with the face of the part which would be in contact with the crown in, in reality. However, you can also have a gap between the contact face and the reference plane, but this may produce unrealistic behavior, especially if the face deforms more towards the ground under external loading. Now, the ground can actually be a rigid or a flexible uh, scenario and the physical interaction between the part and the ground can be simulated using a virtual wall contact capability in SOLIDWORKS simulation. If you do not define this contact, an error message is probably going to be shown at the time you run the simulation setup. Let's take a look at this model of two plates connected by a bolt. Now we obviously do not want to analyze the physical geometry of the bolt so let's see how in SOLIDWORKS simulation we can use the virtual bolt connector to mimic the same effect I'm going to get started with a simulation setup let's call this as bolted joints and since we do not want to analyze the bolt geometry I can simply come in here and exclude that from the analysis what's really neat here is the fact that the program automatically hides the excluded part. Now all I have to do is come in and define my bolted connection. The default selection is the standard bolt and nut, which is what I want to use here. So let's go ahead and make some geometry selections. All I have to do is select the circular edge on the top part for representing the bolt head. And then I'm just going to go ahead and select the circular edge at the bottom that's that's going to represent where the nut sits now notice that the program smartly 
gets the bolt head diameter as well as the shank diameter. Now I can use the same head, head and nut diameter or I can uncheck this box here to specify different values for the uh, bolt head diameter as well as the nut diameter. So again, these are simple fundamental steps that is required for defining your bolted connection. All right, that concludes this presentation. You can watch this presentation as well as several other presentations as part of the simulation step up series on the simulation YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks and have a great day.